Sympathy for the globalists, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, since they're taking over, why not have a little sympathy for the globalists since they're going to be in charge? We need to understand their mindset. We're going to talk about that today on the report from Tiger Mountain. Yes, dialectics as an element of the globalists, one of the main strategies of the globalists. Stick around. Sympathy for the globalists, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we're going to talk about that today on the report from Tiger Mountain. Dialectics is one of their main strategies. Now, what is dialectics? Dialectics is where you essentially, um, you you have, but you control both sides um, of, say, any political situation, both the left and the right. You have your agents in both. And I think that's one of the main strategies of the globalists, um, that, you know, at times they often pick one side, particularly I think the new left at the moment has been something that has been pushing globalist politics with all that identity politics nonsense and um you know, all that dev divisive kind of agenda that they've been pushing through the new left politics and the kind of public shaming and, you know, all the kind of chaos that's been caused through Black Lives Matter and Antifa and things like this. This is clearly something where you can see the globalist hand. But, you know, on, on say, you know, the, the right-wing conservative side, you can't say that they have no presence there. And you always see that, for example, in relation to right-wingers who push Israel, uh, who are very strong on Israel, in support of Israel, you constantly see that. Um, so that, you know, in a way, the globalists always control both sides of politics. And that can even be said to have happened under Donald Trump. That even though Donald Trump questioned um, what you would call the left side of what was going on with globalists in relation to, um, you know, Davos and in relation to, um, you know, a lot of the elements of identity politics and, you know, political correctness that Donald Trump was against, Donald Trump was extremely pro-Israel. He supported Israel in just about everything, right? So this is a very key, it's a key too. If you find a... Um, a right-wing commentator who's extremely pro-Israel, he's probably an agent. And if he doesn't have to directly work for them, um, you know, he um, he can just be um, somebody who, he can be an unconscious agent, as William Burroughs so like that would say. He's just somebody who goes along with it. And, and some, I mean, basically, you, you know that if you're a right-wing commentator and you support Israel, um, that you know, that gives you a pass in a certain uh, a certain extent. And even myself, I'm not entirely opposed to Israel. I mean, I have, a, I have my own complex reasons for that. But like, you know, I think this is part of the way they work and this is the way that the globalists never lose and that even when for example in Australian politics you see Labour and Liberal um, they constantly win because it doesn't matter who wins whether Labour wins or Liberal that they have their agenda there and it's because they have this dialectical uh, approach to political control where they have an iron in every fire uh, and so they had irons in the Trump camp um, I mean obviously Jared Kushner was a classic globalist within the Trump camp and that many have said if there's a uh, aside to criticize Donald Trump, it's always been Kushner's been his kind of Achilles heel. He's always been the one pushing him down the wrong road, um, you know, orchestrating some of his biggest mistakes. And obviously he's been behind this whole let Israel do whatever the hell it likes kind of attitude, which Donald Trump has kind of sheepishly followed. So, you know, this is how they work. And it, it is actually rather clever. Um, and that you should actually acknowledge the level of kind of Machiavellian genius behind um, well, no matter who wins, they always win in the sense that they have got their irons in every fire and that, you know, whatever way the flip of the political coin comes up, they win. And um, it's very interesting too. And I guess the times that they don't win, um, they can do what you just saw with um, the US election where they, um, even though they did have their agenda still being pushed with Donald Trump, just clearly parts of what Donald Trump were doing that they were um, very, very much upset about. So they got rid of him in the end. They rigged the election and got rid of him. And that was that. So this is an extremely cunning and um, well thought out, um, uh, I guess way of political control and it's very hard to imagine how one can defeat um uh, the globalists simply because they are so dialectical and that they come at a situation from both sides and that they control both sides. Even someone like, say, Alex Jones could be controlled opposition, for example, and, and he could be part of the revelation of the art or the revelation of the method, just, you know, revealing what's going on, but doing it in such a ridiculous and over-the-top way that it's actually ineffectual. So, you know, this is fascinating. And um, I think if in my series of sympathy for the globalists, it's important to think about that because, you know, they're very, very cunning and um, they're extremely evil and it's deeply Machiavellian, but it, it keeps winning. And until something else comes along that's actually going to defeat them, which may not, ladies and gentlemen, this is what is happening. So that's the report from Tiger Mountain. Sympathy for the globalists.